Hello there, you artistic internet and beautiful creatures of the beyond. I just realized that we never talked about colors. Like we've been playing with shapes and stuff and talking about how we can make amazing art and whatever, but we never actually talk about the philosophy of how colors really come to be and what is their correlation, what is... Uh, Ah, their connection to one another, etc., etc., etc. So, the first thing you would learn in any art course, class, school, blah, 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 is that there are three main colors. So, these three main colors are red. I'm going to make a nice red over here. I'm using uh, Affinity Photo for this one. And you have blue. And then you have yellow so these are the three main colors now they make a triangle okay this is the trinity of colors now the thing with um, with these colors is that they mix so if i'm gonna make red over here and a red over here I can mix it with blue. Okay, so if I take blue, we're gonna supposed to get a color violet. If I'm gonna take or purple, sorry. Uh, and if I'm gonna take uh, yellow, we're going to take and get uh, orange. But if I'm gonna take yellow and I'm gonna go for blue. We're having a problem here. We're getting a muddy gray. We're not getting either of this combination. And the correct color that we should get should be green. Well, maybe not this intense, but green nonetheless. Now, the problem with this is that the digital world cannot combine yellow and blue. So for that reason, yellow has been compensated by green. So that is why we have, so basically there are four colors in the digital world. It's uh, red, blue, yellow, and green. Because yellow and uh, yellow, blue, and green are independent of each other in this situation. Although you can still combine, for example, green with blue, and you would get a teal, or you would get this with yellow, and you would get a lighter, a lime, uh, a lime green. So, in this sense, we have the RGB element. So, yellow is somewhat compensated or replaced by green in many situations. And I don't know the exact explanation, the technical explanation, but this is why we have RGB monitors and so on and not uh, uh, not RWB monitors, which G is for green, W is for, uh, sorry, uh, Y, not W. I don't know what the hell is wrong with me. Yellow. Yellow. It starts with an Y, not with a W. Okay, whatever. So, this this relates into any digital program out there. And for this role, I have went and created the same thing here. So, you might ask yourself, but when the hell would I ever need to use uh, yellow in combination with red and so on? But if we do a little experiment, yeah, we put it here. And we take another one, we put it over here, let's say. If I'm gonna reduce the opacity to 50, we already get the orange, as you can see. The same happens with the red and the blue. Oops, what did I do? If I go and put it at 50%, I get purple. But again, if I do this, I get the problem that we had before. 
we have a very ugly gray. It's a mute color. So in that sense, we have to replace this with a green. Now, well, when we're doing uh, combinations, but you might ask yourself, like, when the hell is this ever going to happen? So let's say we're taking, uh, let's take some, let's make some squares. So I'm going to take this square. And I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to make this one blue. Okay. And now you might have this situation where you have, let's say, 50% uh, blurriness. And they are overlapping each other. And maybe at this point you're saying, I want to make a gradient out of this for some reason, you know. Uh, on this. So this gradient, as you can see, it starts to blend into the red, transforming it into a purple, which is normal, it's natural. But the cool thing about colors is that this trinity um, creates this trinity internally. So if I would have to make a, pa, 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 let's see, I don't know, what should I use? Mm, oops. Don't select anything. Just let me paint. Maybe paint today. Ah, so many things to take into account. I don't know. Let's take this one then. And disable the freaking. Or maybe I'll do it here easier. Easier. So let's remove this. Oh, the idea is that let's increase the flow. So this is the main trinity, okay? And the internal trinity, let's consider this is green, is this one. Now, the cool thing about these colors is that this can compensate with this. This can compensate with this. And this could go very well with this in certain situations. It's like It looks like a smiley face with lots of stitches. And very creepy and beautiful at the same time. Effect. We are creating art involuntarily. <laughs> and here it looks like a crazy little robot. Anyway, so with free eyes. Um, the thing is that, um, for example, in this case, you can come with an L yellow, yellow, poo, yellow, yellow. What, the, what is wrong with yellow and W in my mouth today? Weird. It is weird. That is the reality. And let's remove this uh, gradient. Now let's make it yellow again. If oh, ah, <sighs> yellow, yellow, yellow with full opacity. Okay, alpha. And as we can see, this works if we're going to relate to this color. Purple with yellow works perfectly. And I think if we group this together and take another shape, let's say this. <laughs> and I'm going to, well, I'm going to make this a mask and clip it. You can kind of see what's happening over here. Oops, but I need the entire, uh, just a second. I need this grouped together. Okay, and now I can move them easier. 
So we can kind of see that this purple here is mingling with this yellow. It can create really interesting uh, effects with these color combinations. And even a, sort of a 3D kind of a sphere if you focus on the shadow and light and highlights. So yeah, this is very important to understand because green is very problematic. So in order to deal with green, you'll have to make it manually by hand and place it wherever you have and then mix it with the other colors because you shall never ma manage to do this. And this applies to painting, uh, if you're doing it in a, in a raster uh, software, and it also translates here as well. So yeah, colors, they're crazy and cool and awesome. Uh, also another important thing when dealing with uh, color, if you're going to focus uh, on shadow and highlights, never, ever, 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 ever go to do something like this. So let's say this is the highlight. Yeah. And this is your shadow. This is incorrect. Never go like this. Your values should be around like this. Well, sorry, it should be on this side. This is the gray area. And for the black, it should be something like this. So this is the correct way to create highlights and uh, shadows. Never go full dark, because then it will look unnatural. As we can see, like on this uh, neutral background, we already see how easy it is to blend in this color. So for example, if I'm going to push some blurriness into this, versus if I would create this as black, we can see that the diffusion of this blurriness is so so strong that it's hard to blend in the background with it. And the same applies here. So I put like a 30%, let's go 30% here. Now, if I go the same down here and I go full white, again, very strong. It's very difficult to combine other colors on top of this. There are very, very rare situations when you go like with maximum values, but usually try to avoid it. Just try to, to dial up just a tiny bit out of uh, the maximum value. So it should be a 0 0.9. That's the maximum that you can push highlights and shadows. Uh, another thing is, for example, and I think we've discussed this. So for example, if you're going to take... Uh, this green and if I want to add a highlight on it you would automatically think well, well let's just go full white like this well not full white and then reduce the opacity and there we go but that is incorrect the correct way to do it is to use the same color and slowly push it towards the white value like this and we can already see that we created a nice highlight over here. Maybe push yeah, like this. And now if I go like for blurriness, let's say for the sake of this, we can see that it is a nice way to create uh, highlights. The same applies to shadows. So if I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm going to put it in the exact opposite spectrum, can see how nice the shadow falls onto this and the color doesn't transmute too far unlike if i would push it too oops uh if i would push it too much onto this value towards the dark like so into the mute colors we can see this is becoming dirty like a, an earthy dirty gray versus when you're keeping part of the color and going to this mm, well center area you're, ke you're keeping the transition into the shadow. And of course, we can also add a gradient to make it more prominent around the object to give it that 3D view if we really want. This is just examples. These are not uh, 
something you would apply directly. But we can see how natural the color looks like this. And of course, if we would add another highlight on this edge, then the medium would start to compensate each other and it would look more natural. Um, let me see if I can apply this here. Let's remove our clown. Well, actually... Ah, <sighs> what should I use? Let's use a big brush. Let's use this color to get rid of everything here. I should have used layers, but whatever. So if I'm going to go with the same example, I'm going to go with a green, yeah? With green. And even with this, don't go full green. Go something like this, let's say. And maybe a little less flow. So I'm doing something like so. If I want to, maybe something bigger, so we can see what we're doing. Okay, so now if I want to push this color towards, let's say this is where the shadow falls, okay? So I'm going like somewhere middle like this, and maybe use a far more inferior flow and just go like this over it. Maybe a smaller brush, it's still too strong, but the idea is this, okay, so we're creating the shadow over here, and now if we want to create the highlight, we're just going to push it on this side, and now I'm just going to slowly, maybe reduce the flow a bit more, slowly going to come this way. And we can see how easy it is to transition this color. We're, ke we're still keeping the this uh, this uh, green that we started on in the middle, but then we're just adding extra color over here, and for the dark side, something like over here. And we're getting a very spherical 3D object. Of course, we can remove some of the... Oh, wait, where is the eraser? Like this, I think. Is this the eraser? Ah, oh. oh, I should have worked on a separate layer. But of course, why would I work on a separate layer when I can just... Ah. So in this case, we're just going to have to use the brush and use this color to kind of remove the edge. And make it a bit sharper, so we don't lose the tone. Don't work like me, guys. Be smart. Organize your work. So yeah, really interesting uh, color guide, in my opinion. And to be honest, I never try to put these things in my head like, ah, oh, I've got to make it so perfect and so like this and this has to follow this color code and this has to follow this and so on and so forth just you know use what's intuitive to you so for example here i made it a bit too strong but if i'm gonna just ah it's not working i need to make it smaller maybe now i'm just trying to dim in the shadow a bit more Make it blend and there we go and here the same we have too much it looks like a circle over here and maybe a bit too strong over here again at the end of the day you have to kind of uh, see what works what doesn't put your feel into it you know don't don't just let yourself be guided by color codes or anything like that and also orient your shadows however you wish. I, I made it linear in this situation from left to right. But you can make it angular and so on and even drop a shadow down here. So for example, I would, again, if I would work with separate layers, I would be smart because 
we know that this is uh, a dark green, okay? So I would maybe choose... Am I on the brush? No, I'm not. I should choose something like this, but then I would push it towards a muter gray like so, but still be in the green value. And then kind of add something like this, maybe even darker, like so. Maybe that's too much. And even darker. Maybe darker like so. And we're keeping some part of this uh, shadow over here. Of course, this is very strong, so I should come and go with something like gray on top of it. Remove some of this parts that are too prominent over this slowly. It's like a very slow process. And of course, I, I it, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good at all. Like the shadow should go underneath it. Like so. And then you have to remove parts of this. Yeah. Don't work like me. <laughs> but you get the idea. So, play with the values, see what works. Sometimes over here, depending on where your light falls, you would have a high, a, a very short and slim highlight. So, for example, if I go like really, really dim and I select this part of the highlight, maybe some of it is reflected. Oh my God, this is really strong. I should reduce it to maybe a one. If I go like really, 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 really like this, you see, I can do part of it because maybe I'm getting a reflection from this part of the, maybe it would be even a bit more darker than this and a bit more mute. Then you just come in here and push the colors in and out and so on. So there are many things you can make this uh, even more. Uh, I don't know, reflective, you can add more whiteness to it. And in this case, I could push the flow a bit more. For example, we can, if we have a glossy side, I'm going to push the white a bit more. Maybe push and do something like this. And in certain situations like this, you can even push it harder and say, hey, we have like this whitish thing. See? It's already creating this glint. Of course, I'm not trying to be perfect in this situation, but you get the idea. You can play with so many elements. <sighs> yeah, so this was my but tend to explain colors and how to play with them and how to fix certain situations you might find odd and don't mix correctly. And in vector design, colors can make the whole difference when you position them right beside each other and they make sense, they feel right. And the same applies to, to painting, but painting is a bit more voluminous and complex. I'm not a good painter, I'll admit it. I'm still trying to grasp some of the elements. Um, and so far I haven't found the correct software for me to start painting. I have Krita, but I, I, I don't know. It just doesn't click with me, all those brushes. Photoshop brush was really cool. Unfortunately, in Affinity, I do not have the... Um, the uh, what's it called the po, 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 the opacity pressure and i cannot work with that unfortunately but i shall see this is something for a different project later on in life and we shall cross that bridge when we get to it well you guys are awesome catch you all next time bye 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 <laughs>